When I was teaching in the classroom, poorly formatted code was the bane of my existence. Just students would call me over to ask me a question on something and I'd look at their code and just trying to read like a string of CSS where it would just go on and on or their HTML nesting was a disaster and I couldn't figure out what I was looking at. So it was always something I really harped on with my students to make sure that if they're calling me over for something, their formatting must be really good so I'm not wasting my time trying to figure things out. And the thing with formatting is it's actually a really personal choice as well because, you know, is it two spaces or four spaces? for a tab or how long should your line length be or you know the ever-ending debate of whether you need semicolons or not when you're writing your JavaScript. And I've heard of companies where these debates of these things go on for hours and days and months where people just can't agree on that and that's a bad thing. If you're working on a team there should be consistency with your files. But the thing is I don't think we should actually be making those decisions ourselves, and I don't think we should actually be taking the time to bother about formatting all of this ourselves when we have tools that can do all of that for us. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to yet another video. I'm glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, we learn about how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And this one's less about making things look good on the page and more about making your code consistent and well formatted and looking good while you're in your editor. A complete waste of time to be having these endless debates on the best way to format, whether it's two or four spaces or line length or whatever it is. And I also think it's a waste of time to actually be going in and manually be doing the formatting yourself when we have tools out there that can both make those decisions for us and do the formatting for us. And one tool that can do that is Prettier. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at how we can get Prettier installed on our system and configured. We're also gonna see how we can have it set up for global settings for project to project to project, as well as how we can have individual configuration files for individual projects. So if you do have a team of people working on a project and everybody has a little bit different of preferences set up, that one project will be following that configuration file rather than the global settings and there'll be consistent throughout the project. So just really fast here I am in VS Code and we're going to be spending some time in here on this and just to show you a little bit of what Prettier can do and it works across a whole bunch of languages. Uh, but you can see here I have this non-formatted section here with the nestings all weird and stuff and if I hit save on that automatically it's all formatted for me. And then if I go over to my JS file, again, things are a bit of a mess here. I can hit save and it fixes all my formatting for me. And of course a CSS file over here. Uh, where I've put all of this in a string or I did like my students always did with this just running line that goes on forever. I hit save and just like magic, it formats it for me. Now Prettier is not limited to only HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It supports just a ton of files that you can see on the screen right now. So just know that it's not limited to HTML, CSS and JavaScript, even though that's what I'm going to be focusing on in this video. Uh, but now we've seen how it can format things. Let's see how we can actually get it installed on your system. So let's start off by taking a look at the prettier website and it already looks pretty nice I think um, but just one thing that's really important here as it says right here is it's an opinionated code formatter so this is the idea with prettier is really to take the decision out of the hands of your teammates and everything so there's no debates going on and it just it's making the decisions for us and so let's just jump in and and do it rather than having arguments and stuff uh, which is why it does only have a few options, but there are a few things that we can configure with it. So that's what we will be looking at um, as we go through on here. And so if we go to install Prettier, it will give us the way we can install it with the command line, but I'm not really gonna recommend that. If you wanna get that, I'll, the link for Prettier is in the description so you can see how you can do it. Uh, with the command line, so you could make sure that, you know, if it is set up and installed there. The only problem is then you're also running it through the command line. And even as the documentation says, to get the most out of it, you probably want to get it set up with your editor rather than doing it uh, through the command line. So to be able to do that, you need the extension. And I'm going to be looking at the VS Code extension, but you can get it for other browsers as well. They have editor integrations and it's available, as you can see here, uh, you know, in most of the most popular editors that are out there today. So you shouldn't have any issues getting the extension um, or getting it configured with your editor if you're not using VS Code. And so let's go back to VS Code since we are going to be doing this. And I'm going to do a Control Shift X to open up my extensions here. And we can look for Prettier. And I already have it installed, but we can go and take a look. Uh, if you didn't have it installed, you just have a green install button there and you install it. And it's as easy as that really, but there is one important step that you take next once you've installed it. And that next step is to make sure that it's your default formatter because Prettier is not the only formatter out there. We want to make sure we're using uh, Prettier and we do that through editing the settings within VS Code. And you'll notice here it's talking about setting it up and you can definitely have different languages support and everything. 
Um, but the settings here that it's talking about, you'll notice it is with the um, JSON format and it's, we can still do it through the JSON format, but it's a lot easier if you open your settings, which is control and comma. And in the search, if we just look up format, you'll see editor and default formatter. And let's make this a little bit bigger so we can read things. And you can choose from the one that you want to work. And you can see there's lots of different formatters here. Uh, I used to use Beautify. I've s since switched over to using Prettier. And so with Prettier there, it's now the default one. And you can choose different settings here on, do you want to format when you paste code in? I have that on. So if I paste code from somewhere else, it's going to format it automatically. Do I want it to format on save? And as long as this is set up here and I like having format on save on personally, then we're ready to rock and roll and Prettier is going to be working. One thing is if you're writing a lot of JavaScript, you're probably using ESLint. And if you are using ESLint, there is one more thing that you're going to want to do. And it talks about that in their documentation. Uh, we're right there, ESLint and other linters. There is the ESLint um, Prettier that just makes ESLint and Prettier work well together. So let's head back to VS Code. And if we just go back to my extensions here and we look up Prettier ESLint, and we can see right there a Visual Studio Code extension uh, format JavaScript and TypeScript using the Prettier ESLint package. So we can get that installed. Um, and it should do the job. And so let's go and look actually, I'm gonna look up Prettier now in my uh, extensions here, so Prettier. And we should be able to find Prettier. And then here we get like act the actual Prettier settings. Um, and here's a few, like, a few of the things that we can change. Because as I said, Prettier is an opinionated formatter, meaning it's trying to take as many of the decisions away from us as possible. And so we can do things like, does it always include parentheses around a sole arrow function parameter? So if you know about arrow functions, if you have only one parameter, you don't need to have the parentheses. But if you have this set, which is the default of always, it means that it's going to add them for you when you hit save. And I'm gonna skip some of these other ones just because I wanna focus on the ones that you probably see the most often. Um, like JSX brackets on the same line can be a very useful one if you're using single quotes or not within JSX. And print width, which is going to be the line limit. So this is one that you can come in and configure. Um, here's where I mentioned the semicolon. So whether to add semicolon at the end of every line or not. So let's, let's just turn this off for fun and see. And we're also gonna come here and change this. Um, we have the prettier tab width here and we'll switch that over to four. And by changing those, let's come over to my, uh, my JavaScript file here. And let's hit save and you notice how it removed all of the semicolons and it also changed my tab spacing over to four. And let's come back to here and I go, you know what? I like this at two and I actually like having my semicolons on. So I put both of those back on and then I come back to here, I'm gonna hit save and it adds all of the semicolons back in and it puts it back to two spaces instead of four spaces. And now, right now, this is using my global settings that I've just here. So this is my personal preference. But what if you have, you're working in a team and you wanna make sure that everybody's prettier is doing the same thing within that team. And so to do that, there's actually a few different files that you can create. So let's just go and look here at the prettier one in the configuration file. You'll notice it actually gives you a few different ways that you can create one. And so we're just gonna do this one here for this demo. But if you have a different way or a different thing for your team that you wanna set up, obviously there's different ways of doing it. And we're gonna be doing it using, as it says, this is gonna be written in JSON. So we can sort of get an idea of how the settings are gonna work based on this basic configuration here. So let's go back to VS Code and I'm gonna open up my project here. And I'm just gonna go in the root document of my thing. We're gonna make a new file, which is the .prettier RC file. And we'll create that. And let's go back to here. We're gonna copy this and we'll play with this a little bit. And we'll come in and put that right there. And so let's actually, let's, let's see what this does. I'm just gonna save this file. So it's in my document now. And let's come back to my navigation.js and let's hit save. And look, it's following this file right here. So if I come in here and I change my tab width to two, save that file, come back over to this, hit save, and you can see the tab width is automatically changed. And this is configured only for this project because this file is saved in the root. So Prettier is smart enough to know automatically to look at that file. So that way, 
Everybody who would be working on this, if we were working on this as a team, would be using that same prettier thing and everything would be configured consistently across our entire team. So if you're just working on your individual projects or other things, you do not need this prettier file here. You could just have it set up locally on your machine, how you like to work. And then when you are working with other people, this is where this could be really useful to make sure that all the files within your project have the same formatting. And while we're looking at code formatting right now and making our code look a little bit nicer, most of the time on my channel, I talk about writing CSS. And if CSS is something that's a struggle for you, I've recently put out a video on the six most important CSS concepts to understand to take the frustration out of CSS. So if you'd like to watch that, it is right here for your viewing pleasure. With that, a really big thank you to Jan, Johnny, Stuart, and Tim, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your core on the internet just a little bit more awesome.